Sometimes I just got a vent. What am I talking about? Well, this is an important one, so you're gonna to wanna to stick with me on this. So let's jump into this together. Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode of Shop Talk, I want to talk about shop ventilation, especially if you have a laser cutter, uh, engraver, uh, SLA 3D printer, a regular 3D printer, and doing styrene-based plastics. It's very important to have good shop ventilation. So one of the things here, I've built a new shop. It's about 600 square feet, which is just dedicated to my laser cutters and printers. I've got another shop in the basement for all the electronics, about another 600 feet. And then I'm actually going to build a pole barn in the backyard for some of the bigger stuff. So anyways, for the 3D printers, laser cutters, and everything else, I wanted to do some appropriate ventilation in the shop. Now this air envelope is separated from that of the house. It's got its own mini split system, which has been working out great, but I still need to ventilate it. So I picked this up off of Amazon and it was uh, very affordable. Now, what is this? Well, it's an inline vent fan. So you might be saying, what is an inline vent fan? Well, kind of long story short, it goes in between something you want to vent in the outside and it goes in line of the pipe. Now you'll see a little bit about this in a bit when I unbox it. However, this is a DC based unit. This is not an AC. You see a lot of the AC units out there. They make a ton of noise. I want it quiet. And this also has pulse width modulation. So when I'm doing, for example, resin based printing, I can turn it down. When I'm doing lasers, I can turn it up and it should be pretty quiet. You see a lot of these used in uh, for growing marijuana, etc., to vent the fumes of the growing plants outside. Um, so you can use this for a lot of different applications, and in this case, it's gonna be to vent the fumes from my shop. So let's go ahead and get this out of the box, and I think you'll see a little bit better. Okay, so we've removed it from the box, and as I was trying to explain with it in the box, when I'm speaking about inline, kind of long story short, you attach a four inch hose here to your point source where you wish to evacuate from, and then you connect another one here going to the outside. You turn the fan on, it creates a vacuum on this side, and it blows out this side. Pretty simple stuff, right? So the piece with this that I really liked is, again, I've built a shop for my 3D printers, laser cutters, and, and that kind of stuff, and I need to evacuate the air. Now, it, I'm going to do a couple different options, and I'll cover this a little bit more detail in future videos. However, I'm going to do point source evacuation as well as sort of broad evacuation. And when I say point source, that's where this will be connected directly to my K40. And then generalized evacuation is when I'll connect this to a fume hood for evacuation from, say, my SLA printers or my diode-based laser cutter engravers. So it's going to do double duty. As I mentioned also, this has pulse width modulation, so it is a DC motor. So you're, you, you should not get the whine of an AC motor as typical in these type of beasts. Um, and again, you just simply press this to kind of speed it up or slow it down. And it's got quite a bit of cable here for the remote control, so you can mount this at a distance away. The power cord isn't as long as the control cable, which is fine because when I built the shop, I had a plug placed over by where this is gonna go anyway. And then I'm going to run this cable over by uh, you know, my work area. So I can just hit this button to turn it on and you know, spin this up and down. Uh, this does move about 203 cubic feet a minute, which is a pretty good amount of air. And especially, you know, coming, you know, serving the K40 laser cutter to the ambient extraction from, say, the diode laser or the SLA printer. Um, again, I can spin this up or down, so I can go a couple cubic feet a minute all the way up to 203, which is pretty adequate for my purposes. Now, the one other thing I wanted to talk about is with air evacuation. I get a lot of questions for this, and this goes for 3D printers, laser cutters, you know, anything you can imagine where you want to evacuate the air. I think what a lot of people miss is if you're going to evacuate a certain number of cubic feet per minute, which in this case is going to be 203, 
you have to replace that air with 203 cubic feet per minute also. So if you're utilizing this in a sealed basement or work area, etc., you're not going to get the results you expect. And, and I hear you know in the comments on a lot of my older videos about people not experiencing good results with different type of evacuation systems I've spoken about in the past. And this really is one of the reasons. Again, you have to have this makeup air coming in. Now again, I designed this shop to be able to have to vent in makeup air as well as evacuate stale air through a device like this. So again, keep that in mind. 203 in, 203 out. If you only allow 100 in, the best you're going to get is 100 out. So now with this, I want to do a little bit of PSA, if you will, with regards to carbon monoxide and the issues you can run into venting your shop. Uh, you know, if it's in an area where you have a hot water heater or furnace or any other type of open flame appliance that can create carbon monoxide. Now, one of the things, as I mentioned, that when you're extracting, say, 203 cubic feet of air a minute, you have to have an input of that amount of air. And say you have a water heater that's not a power vent unit, that's just a draft vent unit, and you turn this on and you're only putting 100 uh, cubic feet per minute into this room, what's going to happen is it's going to suck air back down the chimney stack of the hot water heater or the furnace and in doing so it's also going to suck carbon monoxide into the room so this is a very dangerous combination if you will so one of the things if you're going to install a ventilation system into your home shop be very aware of carbon monoxide producing appliances that are in the area in which you're evacuating the air. Now also keep in mind, if you're doing this, your whole house is going to be affected even if this is in the basement. Now obviously if you have a, a multi-story home, upstairs is gonna be a little bit different. It's going to be near the closest vent, but if you're creating a negative pressure zone in your home, then obviously it's going to suck whatever back in. So again, just be safe with this. Think this through. Don't want any accidents. Invest in a carbon monoxide detector. Best investment you can ever make. So with that being said, if there's any questions, hit me up in the comments below. As mentioned before, I'm going to be doing several videos on this after I install this in my shop to show you how I'm, I'm going to use this to accomplish all the stuff I talked about here. So watch out for those. Also, Swag Shop's up there, and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.